Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an instructive game to share with you from 2001. This is only a 24 move game, a rapid game between Gary Kasparov on the white end and Nigel Short. A couple lessons from this one. Uh, one positional in nature and another is this very nice tactical idea. So on board, French defense, Tarash variation, open Tarash, Knight g f3, knight f6, and it's official. We have this alpha zero pawn present. Space invader pawn drives the knight back. And white is there in time with c3 to control the knight, to maintain a pawn on d4. This guy doesn't have any good forward moves now. From here, b6. So this is the positional lesson to really take away from this game, and it occurs on the queen side. We have a battle of ideas with white's uh, with black's move here and white's reply to it let's see first of all what black's idea is with b6 he's looking to pursue a light square bishop exchange he's trying to exchange his bad bishop for white's good bishop okay sensible enough let's see white's reply though he puts the bishop on b5 so let me ask you what do you think the deep idea is behind white's last move if you'd like to, go ahead, pause the video, maybe give it 30 seconds, and see what you come up with. Okay, I'm not going to share what that deep idea is just yet. We're going to get to that soon enough. First, let's get a few more developing moves in. Bishop e7, both sides castle, some room for the queen knight. Many of white's moves in this game are looking to improve this queen knight. a5, knight f1, bishop a6. One more pop quiz here. What is White's reply to this last move? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, move played. A4. This is the deep idea behind bishop to b5. White was anticipating bishop a6 would be played, and he wants to be in a spot to reinforce the b5 point with a pawn. Basically, White knows he can't prevent the light square bishop exchange. If black really wants to get that in, he's going to get that in. But what white is saying is if you pursue the bad for good bishop exchange, there will be a cost. What is that cost? Let's see. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop. This is the cost. It is completely dominated now by a pawn. This knight here, dominated by a pawn as well. There is a serious space disadvantage for black. This is a superior structure for white. For the remainder of the game, black is only playing on three ranks, whereas black, or excuse me, whereas white has fun on the remainder of the ranks. A problem here for black. These two pawns are very invasive. Pawn on b5 and e5. Okay, we have some play on the king's side now. We have a square produced for this knight so that this guy on b8 finally has a square. Okay, knight g3, black underdevelops so that the other guy could develop. Meanwhile, look at the progress white has made with this queen knight it is now a star piece in the game observing f6 it's coordinated very well with the pawn and it puts pressure on the heart of the king side structure that pawn i'll frequently uh, describe as the two point pawn okay from here g3 small improvements on the king side knight g6 h4 and now knight d to b8 so in the computer's eyes, this is a step in the wrong direction. What it is a fan of, instead of this move, is the capture on d4, followed up with queen c7 and some play on the c file. Black would really like to get the queens off in this position because there's something brewing on the king's side with this knight on h5, intersection square on f6. Okay. Black doesn't continue in this way. He puts the other knight on f8. King g2. This is healthy. 
You'd prefer to be on the second rank than first, a light square instead of a dark square. And there are also these ideas now of Rook H1 in some cases. There can be something exciting happening uh, on the H file. From here, it's Queen D7. This move has an eye on B5, but it's a big blunder. Can you spot why? What is White's reply here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, this is a bolt out of the blue. Bishop h6. What's happening here? White's trying to simply make the g-pawn flinch. He doesn't need to capture that pawn. He just wants it to move. He wants it to capture. For what reason? Two reasons. f6 becomes a hole, and h6 becomes a hole if this guy isn't here. And he's willing to give up a full piece in order to gain access to these two points, f6 and the h6 square. Pawn takes bishop in the game, and now we have queen d2. I'd like to point out also that this move right here, knight takes pawn, may have tempted many players, myself included. It is the two-point pawn. There is this idea to next follow up with h5. This is a way forward. It still likes this position for white. Here's a way to look at it, though. You have this option to simply knock the pawn right out or influence the pawn with bishop to h6, the move played in the game. One thing you can take into account here is this is a best piece in the game. So maybe it's not a wise choice to give that piece up so easily. I mean, when you look at it, how many tempi were required in order for this knight to arrive on h5? He had to go to d2. The rook had to get out of the way. That's two. Three, four, five tempi were required for the knight to get to h5. Maybe it's not a good idea to give that piece up so quickly. Look at all the effort that went into establishing that piece in Black's house. How about we get a piece that hasn't moved yet? into the mix. That's what's happening here with bishop h6. Okay, let's see how play follows. Pawn takes bishop, queen d2. There's no stopping the queen from knifing in. And then look at how the queen and knight are coordinating on g7. From here, f5, trying to defend uh, these squares. Now the pawn is out of the way, but white can simply take on Passan. Bishop backs off, queen takes pawn, what do you do? There's no good answer at this stage. Rook a7, knight g5, this is right around the corner and there's really nothing you can do about it. Uh, the move played in the game is queen takes b5. If you try to put the knight in the corner, I mean you're better off just resigning instead of putting the knight in the corner, but this wouldn't even be a help because f7 can still be played. Knight takes pawn is met with mate. So there's just no defense here. Queen takes b5. We continue with f6. Rook takes f6. Otherwise, it would have been mate. Knight takes rook. This game goes no further. Black resigns. He's up the white is up the exchange now, and this knight can't be captured. If you take the knight, it's going to be mate. There's no way forward here for black. So a very nice game. Two nice little lessons here, one positional on the queen side, and of course this awesome bolt out of the blue with bishop to h6. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.